All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Jill Tupper, who is in a snowy Denver, Colorado. How are you doing, Jill? That's right. I'm great, John. How about you? <laughs> Fantastic. And Jill is a global speaker and leadership innovator and has worked with Fortune 500 companies like Boeing, McDonald's, Amex, YPO, Young Life, climbed Kilimanjaro, mm -hmm. and also worked with Mother Teresa's uh, missionary of charity in Calcutta and Ethiopia. You've run marathons, triathlons. I'm, I'm getting tired just reading this. Me you know? too. <laughs> 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 and Jill Harness is the core strength of body and mind and purpose through neuroscience, which has uh, uh, proven to catapult leaders to new heights. And what you've been doing now in the last while is the really interesting part where you have been on the ground in Ukraine, helping soldiers, refugees, first responders, leadership, how to um, how firsthand the, the battle of the mind is the same as the battlefield of the war zone in Ukraine. So what we're going to talk about today is the neuroscience of calming within the chaos and uncertainty of war, you know, given your experiences in Ukraine. Um, so, ju so just um, le let's start off by sort of bottom lining how did you make the connection between the you know between your work with neuroscience and then going to somewhere as extreme uh, as a war zone and figuring out that that uh, the work you're doing had a utility that, an extremely important utility there well it, in many ways it was just by happen chance uh when i was asked to go to ukraine i have spent several months in russia um, different points doing leadership training. I've spent time in Nicaragua during the time of the Contras, Mother Teresa's Calcutta for a month, uh, Ethiopia, different places globally where I've worked a lot with leadership development. And so when I went initially to Ukraine, I was thinking I was going to help evacuate people, um, bring food supplies, whatever they were needing. And instead, within 36 hours, I am training a team of amazing first responders that uh, were in heightened states of anxiety because I went at the beginning of month three and I had no idea if it was going to work. So I trained them in some basics of shifting out of the fight, flight, freeze into the rest, release, reset of the nervous system. And it worked. And mm. then it took off. The next day, there were three different entities, organizations uh, that sat around a table and saying, everyone is transformed from this very, very simple thing um, in the neuroscience, how to build a, or rebuild a natural connection we have. So at the end of the day, fell into it, it took off, and that is the beginning of my entire life change. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, some people listening, you know, might say, uh, number one, uh, I think maybe you want to explain a little bit more about neuroscience to people. I think people have heard of it, but maybe not understand it fully. And then I, I think oftentimes when people hear things like this, they think, oh, well, it can't be that, you know, it can't be that easy or it can't be. Surely I can't like reprogram my neural pathways. Well, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, I think you're hundred percent correct. I was, I was flabbergasted that it worked in the war zone. So I was in as much amazement as anyone else. And then they literally put me in a car and I'm being taken into make alive through everything you could imagine in a, in a war movie, like a world war II movie, mm -hmm. you know, all the blockades and all the soldiers in the tanks. And then took me into uh, working with potentially the military and no one mm -hmm. else could go with me. And that's because it's an undisclosed area. And I discovered that I've got psychologists, um, uh, first responders, soldiers, chaplains, all sitting there asking me to train them. And again, I'm saying, guys, you know what? I don't know if this is going to work for you. I just know that it's worked in the battlefield of the mind in the U.S. and this other group of first responders that I trained. So uh, I have been as in amazement as anyone else. But I'd say to you, here's the, here's the key. We already have that ability to toggle between our sympathetic system, which is our high alert state, which we all need, by the way, and our parasympathetic system is where the body re-strengthens, re-stores um, and refuels and then presses a reset. 
that's already there. So we're not creating something that isn't present. We're just giving them the tools to accomplish it. And that's mm -hmm. what I feel like we've lost in today's world is our minds have been uh, hijacked by the sympathetic system. Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely. And I think because um, even when you, you know, just taking the world the rest of us live in, not outside war zones and whatever, but we're still bombarded all the time with negative, like, you know, news and social media and people are feeling stressed. They're feeling like, oh, I'm busier than ever. And I'm always saying, no, I think you're more distracted than ever, to be perfectly honest. Yes. Okay. Um, and so... And and I think a lot of people kind of live in this fog, if you like, and and they're and they've and as you said, I mean, they have kind of outsourced their mind to to electronics, even. Well, and I even have a whole course on that, conquering digital distractions, that I've mm -hmm. written, and it does. It's all based in neuroscience, the way I approach it. So yes, the more messages we get, at the higher rate that we're getting it, our minds weren't designed to be operating at this high alert state. So you're right. Electronics is a big part of this. And, but there's so many other factors. We're so removed from being outside. Mm -hmm. We're so removed often from our body. And if you see what the studies are saying is our prefrontal cortex typically is um, overdeveloped. So when I go into companies like Boeing or Edison, and I'm trying to train them to what I call integrative awareness, wake up to the messages that are already going on within our own bodies. Now, most of us have separated ourselves from this. So what are they telling me? They're saying, John, they're saying, Jill, here's the gig. I'm going to set my alarm to remind me to get up and get something to drink or to get up and stretch my body. And I'll say, do you think there's another signal? They had totally lost the ability to hear the signals of thirst, the signals of the body literally saying you need to stretch, you need to open, you need to adjust your position. So when our prefrontal cortex is sort of the bully, if, if you will, we value information in our culture, but it's cheap. If I, mm. I don't know if that makes sense to you. Information, no one on the planet needs more information. In fact, I don't even give information. We go into integration. Does that make yeah. sense? No, that that makes that makes a hundred percent sense because I think yeah, you're right. I mean, we get overloaded with all these messages and all of that kind of thing, and we don't know how to implement anything anymore. You're right. It's, I mean, uh, we and we want an instant. We think, oh, well, our phone will somehow do that for us. But then, if you go back to you know your more extreme version, like in you're in Ukraine, right? If I'm in a situation of obviously immense stress, I'm just trying to survive. I'm trying to get through the next five, 10, 20 minutes and beyond. How, do, how then do you help somebody calm that mind and start to move and start to re reprogram their, their neural pathways? Cause that would seem like one of the most difficult ones when somebody is in that fight or flight or just survival, intense survival mode. Well, you know, I, I would have thought that, uh, to be honest, but that wasn't, proven literally in the war zones of Ukraine. So I think the natural state, we can access calm even in chaos. And we've all known little bits of this. We've just lost the ability to do it consistently. And we've gotten used to the heightened state of the sympathetic system. And so what I was shocked, amazed, that I might be in a small village uh, in the midst of Mykolaiv, and it's a small Korean village and bombs are going off. We've got 60 people. These are people that are all first responders. They are helping their neighbors. They are dealing with the war efforts. And we're all shoved in this small space. Bombs are going off. Air raids. Everyone, everyone shifts into their parasympathetic system, including myself and my mm -hmm. interpreter. And so if I hadn't seen it again, 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 in fact, sometimes people can touch base in it within minutes. And I would say uh, the average time I saw was seven to 20 minutes, 21, probably seven to 21 minutes is how quickly we could get people into that state. Now you have to practice to stay. You've got to train the brain to return to this pattern. And that's a lot of what I do. Mm. No, that 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 makes perfect sense. Um, and if you think, you know, coming back to the rest of us and the rest of the world is, 
I think one of the problems, uh, Jill, that we have is that we, particularly in the West and even in corporate America, all of that, and we celebrate anxiety. We celebrate stress. We think it's great. We think these are fantastic markers of how committed we are to what we're doing, how important we are. I mean, the more stressed I am, clearly the more important I am. Uh, and and these are these are things that have become ingrained ingrained in our culture, and they're very destructive. Yeah. No, I can't agree with you more. In fact, I work a lot with CEOs and people that behind the scenes will come to me and say, listen, if I continue, in fact, I wish I could remember the exact quote from Bill Bice. He's a YPO, YPO or CEO of his own company. And he said, it never dawned on me that athletes train. So I, I connect a lot of this because of my marathons, triathlons, outrigger racing. I see things a bit more like an athlete. And so he talked about Jill I train physically, but then when I, I don't train and to be able to handle the stress that I face on Monday morning, and I expect my body to continue to move forward in it. So what we've got to understand is the mind, the body, the emotions, the breath, um, it's all connected. It's not separate. So when you neglect the body, I guarantee you it is taking a toll on the ability for you to think clearly, to be able to move forward. So it's so integrated and it's so simple and we're designed this way. It's just that we've lost the ability and it isn't that difficult. Yeah. Well, if you think about it, I mean, the way even, uh, health and medical is set up. I mean, we're set up that if I have a problem with my, with my mental health, I go to a counselor, a psychiatrist, whatever. If I have a physical ailment, I go to my doctor, but they don't communicate and they don't. And mostly, I mean, it's changing a little now, but the whole mind body thing I think is, is missing. And I think that's when, when you see health initiatives or anything like that, it's like, they're always separated and we need to have that more holistic approach. No, I really agree with that. And so for me, I see it as a triathlon. And I've talked about this mm -hmm. in my courses at the Rady Center of Executive Development. When I was an instructor there, I've created courses that say leadership is a triathlon, body, mind, business. And what I mean by business is I really mean purpose, right? Underneath right. That. But the reality is when you're a triathlete, you're good in one sport or you never tackle it, right? You're Mm -hmm. pretty decent in the other, and you are awful in the third. <laughs> well, that's the way I see us as human beings is we're body. Some people are brilliant with taking care of the body. Some people are much better at taking care of the mind and leading with the mind. Some people are much better and in touch with their emotions, but we need to bring all three together. And my philosophy is so that we can live our purpose. And so I believe everyone on the planet has a purpose, a special abilities set set of gifts, but we block it often because of our inability to stay connected to all three aspects. So it's just training. It's training more as a triathlete in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fascinating. I, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the purpose bit because I, I think that's become more and more clear that uh, often we live, we do what we do, but we don't really understand why. We don't understand the purpose for what we do. Yes, we understand maybe my job is to feed, you know, I do my job to feed my family. Is that really, is that really enough of a purpose? Because will that really get me through the the hard time? Will that really focus me? And I think finding that purpose is is so incredibly important. But again, that's not something that's encouraged. Well, I love what you're saying here. So if you go, if you've never read it, read it, run to get it. Victor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning. Mm -hmm. and I've always been fascinated about how did people live through the Holocaust? How in yeah. the world could anyone have done that? And one of his quotes, he says this, John, he says, we have enough to live by, but little to nothing to live for. We have mm -hmm. the means, but no meaning. And that's what I see so much prevalent in uh, the world around us is that so much of us were saturated with the stuff, but that actually even becomes a um, almost that we're seeking more of that when at the end of the day, the real purpose is what allows us not only the drive, the passion for life, but to live life to the fullest is designed in such a way that when we're connected to our purpose, we can live much more passionately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, my my dad, God rest him, used to say, uh, "If you have an, uh, having enough is more than enough." 
Uh, that was his great. That was his great quote. Whenever you complained about it. not having things, you, he would just say, "Having enough is more than enough." I love uh, it. So, so then, uh, I mean, go back to going back to the, the the war zone, right? So you have people, as we said, you know. I mean, you're able to get them within a short amount of time into a different state, regardless of like there's bombs going off, there's all this yeah. stuff going on. Um, just I- explain a little bit about what does that look like? What does that process look like? And what does the outcome look like? What's when, when somebody like walks out afterwards, like what, I mean, what difference does it make to their life? Okay. So that's a loaded question, but um, yes. okay. So <laughs> when you're in the sympathetic system, you are in fight, flight, freeze, or even flat. All right. So I want you to understand that, that I've worked literally with a man that jumped out of the window. He was in flight. I've worked Mm -hmm. with a woman that just froze in her home. She was in freeze. I've worked with men that were so angry in inappropriate ways because they were in fight. All right. So fight, flight, freeze. Now, if it continues on, I've also worked with people in the U S by the way, that were in flat where they had lost their ability to even connect. And they were very engaging as a person, but they had been burning their sympathetic system at, it's almost like driving a car full speed everywhere, right? Mm. And then, then your transmission falls out. That's (laughs) what it looks like when you're in the sympathetic system. Now the parasympathetic, what I saw in front of my own eyes again and again, is that the initial state that people went into was a release. They felt this release. So that is the parasympathetic release. Then I saw rest. They would start yawning and get really tired. And then they would begin to feel some restoration, depending on how long they'd been depleted. Mm -hmm. And then they could experience a reset so that they could go into the parasympathetic system, then into the high alert when needed and back. Now, here's the thing. I didn't take them into it. Well, I guided them. I coached Mm -hmm. them. I trained them. They have to get there on their own. All right. So there, I'm not a magician. I go in and I guide people through this like an athlete, because if you're going to be like Simone Biles, right. And you're going to mm-hmm. compete, you're going for the gold, right. And she's on the balance beam. Where is her mind? Her mind is her mind thinking I'm going to fall. Is her mind thinking I'm going to blow it? No, she is trained for decades, not one day, not two days. She's trained when she didn't feel like it. She trained for decades to bring her mind, her body, and her emotions, all fueled by her purpose, so in sync that she can be on that balance beam and do things I could never do and you could never do. That's really what life is for all of us. So I don't know if that helps a little bit, but we have a natural set of tools that are already within our bodies right? They're already there in our minds, in our bodies, in our breath, in our emotions. And all I do, I've trained in these and I've taught these for decades. And now I've put them all together and we've even created, I don't know if you're interested, but yes, please. um, A release from trauma kit. Now that we, um, I've been there three months now in the war, uh, three times, we're heading back March 13th. And so I went from creating um, using slides that I've used for YPO and American mm-hmm. Express, right? And translating them. Now we have a full on um, release from trauma. And this is something that we I created and we're able to, this is some of the companies that we've worked with. But what we did is I created, this is all in um, Ukrainian, by the way, mm-hmm. but we created a Ukrainian. This is a 30, 30, 30 and a release from trauma kit. So now we actually have used this in the U S and in Ukraine. And we actually have tools, very natural, simple tools, but that you continue with this in 30, 30, 30, which is a neuroscience trick, but, mm-hmm. um, you can rebuild your neural pathway re-strengthen it to be able to toggle between the two simply profoundly. And I'm living proof. I've gone now and continue to go back to war zone. And I'm not saying I'm perfectly calm, but Mm -hmm. I know how to use these tools so that I won't come back traumatized. Right. 
Yeah, no, that makes total sense. And just on that idea of trauma, because I, I just want to highlight that because people sometimes think, always think, oh, trauma, that's something very extreme. You say, oh, I can understand people in war zone in Ukraine having trauma. But traumas can be small things that happened in your childhood, even recently, that trigger something. And I think that's when I think people need to understand that they probably do have traumas in their life. They don't have to be these massive, huge things, right. but they can be things that really do impact your life. You just don't recognize them yet. Well, I think you're a hundred percent right, but trauma is a loaded word. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Sometimes try to stay away from it. If it's extreme trauma, I'm not your girl. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not the one to work with you. Although I'll be interested about that. I don't, that's <laughs> the jury's out. But what I have found is that, um, one question I asked again and again and again, whether I was in a bomb shelter training, whether I was in an, a hidden village where, um, gosh, a lot of the military's wives and their kids are hidden and I'm, I'm training them to get them out of some horrific things that they have seen, whether it was dealing with first responders, whether it's with refugees, but I was disseminated all over Ukraine. And I asked this question again and again, I ask them, um, once they became aware of how the stress and overwhelm was affecting their body, okay, most of the time we don't even look like we're overwhelmed and stressed, but everybody's walking around like it because mm -hmm. we've just gotten sort of deafened to the body signals, okay? So once I call them into what I call integrative awareness, then um, I ask them, how many of you felt this high level of stress and overwhelm before the war? What percentage do you think, John, said that they felt that heightened state? This is in the war zone in Ukraine before the war. Oh, I'd say it's a majority, a high majority, is it? It's 100%. 100%. 100%. Well, you can't get much higher than that. <laughs> I was like, no way. So then I thought, okay, let me ask you this. How many of you felt in your physiology, in your body, your emotions, your mind, that heightened level of stress before COVID? Mm, 100%. 100%. Yeah. 100%. That's where I ascertained that the battlefield of the mind in the U.S. is the exact same battlefield, right? This battlefield is the same battlefield because the battlefield is ultimately in the mind. Yeah, no, I, that's fantastic, Jill. I totally agree with you. And I think, and that's such a fascinating insight if you have people who are in the middle of a war zone, but then they tell you that they were already stressed out before there was even a war. Um, it just shows you, as I said earlier, it just shows you how we have become, like I said, we almost celebrate it, but we have come, we coexist with stress and anxiety all the time. And we think that that's just the way life is. And it's fantastic to see somebody like you offering a, a offering an alternative and one, but, but I wanted to come back to one thing that you just mentioned earlier, just quickly is that you can't, you, you're not a magician. You can't fix people, right? People have to go this journey on their own, right? I mean, they have to commit to this journey. And I think that's another thing that we struggle with today is that people oh everybody wants a quick fix right you know there's constantly we're bombarded with yeah 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 you don't need to do this just this app will do it or just take this new nootropic and you'll be fine or whatever uh but it's really important to stress that you have to invest in yourself you have to do the work yourself because nobody's going to nobody can or will do it for you and there isn't a medication or a gummy or whatever in the world that's going to fix you no i i'm so grateful for what you're bringing up and that's one of the reasons i compare it all the time as training like an athlete simone mm. biles did not get to the gold because she showed up a few times when she felt like it and so she had to go after it decades, not, I mean, decades. And mm -hmm. we have spent decades training our mind to focus on the worst case scenarios that may never happen, but <laughs> we've expended extraordinary energy. What we don't understand is we are training. We're just training the wrong direction. <laughs> now, let me, I'm going to tell you this brief story. So yep. amazing man, Yuri, um, he was in a village and I don't want to say too much, but he was in a village um, that was occupied. He and his wife felt led to stay to help other people throughout that village, which is a brave decision. Well, their flat happened to be where they could see the airport 
now occupied by Russians. And so he does what any self-respecting first responder, good man, he becomes a spy and he starts taking photos, right, of what's happening and getting it to Ukraine, the Ukraine military. Now, what you have to understand is when you're in this situation, nowhere did I drive. Do you drive very far without having all your documents checked, your phone checked? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're really suspect of me. And I always wear like a red cross on my arm and I wear you know, this was given to me by a soldier or my Ukrainian patch, but they got to be careful because spies can infiltrate anywhere. And what happened, um, the, the military did a brilliant job of telling him what, how to erase the files on his phone, but they neglected to tell him to erase the trash. So mm -hmm. one of these times he's going through all of this, the Russians discover in his trash what had happened. And at this point he's taken to prison. And he is tortured mentally, emotionally. He keeps hearing others being tortured physically. He's waiting for this. So he's in there three days and holding on tight. But then by day five, six, he's just like, is no one coming for me? By day seven, he was released, grabbed his wife, his children, because they already knew he was obviously going to continue that, that practice. And that was a miracle. He gets to Ivano Frankovs at the exact time I happen to show up. And he sits in my training and he is full out. He will not let this trauma traumatize him for the rest of his life. So this is what I want to say about trauma. I've experienced it where we can break through situational trauma quickly before people become traumatized. He did it full out, fully present, and he still trains to this day because he had enough to fight for. Many of us don't understand that our purpose is that important to fight for. And when we just continue to go with the flow, the pattern of the world, the, the, the overwhelm, you will crawl across the finish line, but you can also run sprint across the finish line. And that's all up to us. Yeah, no, fantastic. Perfect way to put it. Yeah, you can crawl across the finish line or you can you can run across it and feel fantastic. Sure. You got, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, listen, all of Jill's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, uh, Jill, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do and how they can learn more. Oh, well, my total, total life has been hijacked by the war, so to speak. <laughs> and um, so there are a couple ways that people can really help. A, jilltupper.com. Go to my website. There you can find our Ukraine page. We don't have a lot on there, guys. We're boots on the ground. We're doing it. So don't expect to find a plethora of info. I would encourage you to go to our Instagram. And it's Jill Tupper. We don't even have a big following there. No one knew this is what we were going to be doing. Uh, LinkedIn, we're really going to try to get that going. So connect with me on LinkedIn. But what I would say to you is this, is... Um, if you've got uh, the funds to support, we need it. We're 100% boots on the crown. What you give goes directly. And you can see our real-time stories kind of a little bit lagging maybe where we are just for safety. But you're going to see our real-time stories on Instagram. We are uh, committed to train 1,000 people and create... We are you know, in the process of updating and all of these have to be translated. Our release from trauma kits. And so it costs us you know, really about 500 a person to be able to train them at this juncture. And so we are uh, really trying to raise $500,000 to train 1,000 people, boots on the ground in Ukraine, and then we will be training trainers. So this is all a very grassroots mission that's happening. It's going full force. You can find a QR link. We're becoming a not-for-profit now. None of this was in our... <laughs> Mm -hmm. our future. But we know now that we can't uh, unsee what we've seen. I cannot walk away after I've seen that it works. And now we're being asked to go in other countries. So I believe we're being uh, called to create and be a 1.5 response team. And that's going to be global. So we'd love you to be a part of that partner with us. And it would be a joy, absolute joy. Fantastic. As I said, all the information will be below here. So I encourage you to go check it out and support the work that Jill is doing. So listen, thanks again, Jill. Absolutely fascinating. Yeah. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again very soon. Yeah.